All right, so we're gonna make a millisecond timer in Spark AR. Uh, let's add an object, 2D text, and we will name it timer text. Now this should be integrated into your scene or attached to a face tracker. Um, what we want is the 0.00. .00. This is the format of the timer that we're looking for. Um, so in order to do that, um, there's a few things we need to do um, in the patch editor and a few things we need to do in script. And I uh, will walk through those with you. So format it however you like. I'm just trying to make it visible for you here. Uh, add patch, run time. This will give us the amount of time that has passed since the effect was loaded. We'll drag out of time and type offset. This object lets us zero out that number by pulsing the reset. We can do that with a screen tap. So every time we tap the screen, it's uh, going to reset back to zero, which is pretty cool. Now we need to, this is the number that we, we want um, to modify, and we have to do that in script because there's a couple methods that we can't do in the patch editor right now. So add asset, script, uh, to send a value to the script, we'll click the little plus on to script number, and we'll call this the timer. Uh, click the little arrow to add it to the patch editor. And now this value is available in our script. So let's head over to our script um, using your favorite text editor. Um, I use Visual Studio. It's a big download. Uh, you can also use Brackets or Sublime are a couple good ones that are free or almost free. Uh, so let's check it out. All right, so here we are in our script. It comes with a bunch of helper ideas to get started. We'll delete all the green stuff below diagnostics. We want to keep that. It'll help us if we need to debug something. We can send messages to our console in Spark. Um, another module we need by typing constant is the patches module in order to get that timer uh, variable that we sent to the script from the patch editor. So constant patches require patches. Make sure there's a semicolon there. All right. So let's do what we got to do here, which is a promise all, and make sure that we have access to the object that we're, we're interested in, whether it's, um, could be anything, but in this case, it's the timer text. Usually these are objects or materials that you need uh, from your scene. So we'll type scene, root, find first, and timer text, because that's the object we want to access and, and modify. We want to modify the text property on that object. So after that, we'll go then, return those results. So that's a function, results. And yeah, so we're gonna put all our code after that bracket there. And in order to get the timer text object, we will store it in an object. We'll call it timer count text and it is stored in an array that was returned and uh, that was put in the results there. So results zero. It's the first object that we listed there. Okay. So we're almost done. Not too much of this. Um, in order to get the value that runtime is sending, we'll use patches, the patches module outputs because it's we're sending it out to the script. Um, get scalar, because it's a number that we declared. Um, and then we'll name it timer. And then we'll use the, 
the promise thing here. Then, and now use a representation of the object. We can call it anything. We'll do timer object, and then a cool arrow, curly braces. All right. So we can't access the value directly. We need to subscribe and monitor it uh, in order to break it down um, into a usable, in order to grab the value because in Spark, a lot of stuff happens with signals and um, you know there's a lot of signals happening at once. So um, timer object, monitor, subscribe, and then we'll have a function. I'll just call it the timer event. So this monitor subscribe function on this object, the number that's coming out, uh, we'll break it down into a new value and an old value, um, sort of parsing the signal for us as it's happening. Um, so now we can perform some methods on those numbers because it's grabbing them for us. Um, so we'll do timer event. No, we, we want to change the timer text. So timer count text dot text. The text of that object equals the timer event that we subscribe to. It's a new value, and then this method to fixed is what's going to round it to um, the two two digits after the decimal point. To fix two, we could enter three, and then it would be three. Um, and then another method on top of that to string, so that it can be used as text. So let's see if that works. Save your file. All right, so we're back in Spark AR Studio uh, with our timer that's resetting when we tap in the millisecond format. Uh, it's very cool. Uh, we probably want to add more features and functions like a stop button, um, not a button feature, a stop ability, and because um, buttons are discouraged, as are static text. So. Uh, like I said earlier, attach this to some part of your effect, whether it's your face uh, movement or um, some stylistic integration. But let's go over uh, some different ways we can achieve a more complex function uh, with, with the stop and the reset. Um, in order to do it with runtime, and this as a base configuration, uh, requires a lot more code than an alternative, which I'll show you uh, with Simple Timer, the Simple Timer free patch asset. Um, but I'll include that. I tackled that hairy beast this morning and um, got it working. So if you want to look how it's done in code, maybe you like doing that and scrounging through there. Um, it was kind of fun because I enjoy solving those problems. But check out the Simple Timer free patch asset. I'll link to this in the description. Convert to patch group. It has some built-in functions. Um, it uses a loop animation and counters to keep track of time. So I'm sort of curious if it can do the heavy lifting of keeping track of time, uh, like runtime does. I don't know how heavy that is, but you know, it's something that's always going and it's very specific. It's signal based, um, so it's going to be very accurate. Um, Let's see if Simple Timer is as accurate. Um, we know that it has some things that we need, like stop and reset. We can count up, count down. So let's set up a little contest here between the Simple Timer and Runtime. Count up. Uh, to get to milliseconds, we'll set the speed to as close to a thousand as we can. Start time zero. Stop time. Ooh, 100, sure. Um, no, we want a big number. All right. Then we'll drag out a screen tap. 
and do a switch, an on off switch, pulse, turn on, turn off. All right, and this number that's going to come out, um, we need to divide by 60. All right, let's hook it up and have a showdown. Press refresh, restart over here on the left. Okay, so this is the runtime. This is simple timer. Ready, set, go. All right. So they're pretty close. I don't know how they would compare in like an Olympic time trial uh, situation, but um, for you know filter games and mini games, uh, Simple Timer I think is a good solution. Uh, it's free if you want to download it, and um, yeah, I'll also attach a link to the code version of a timer that uses runtime if you're looking for something that's maybe more precise. But this is nice because you have. Um, all those functions built in, ready to go. You can stop it and reset it, count down. Yeah. 